Chapter 37 Jacob lived in the land of his father's sojournings in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was pasturing the flock with his brothers. He was a boy with the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his sons, because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a robe of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Hear this dream that I have dreamed. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright, and behold, your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brothers said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Or are you indeed to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Behold, I have dreamed another dream. Behold, the sun, the moon, and eleven stars were bowing down to me. But when he told it to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves to the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the saying in mind. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. And he said to him, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring me word. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a man found him wandering in the fields, and the man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock? And the man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from afar, and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we will say that a fierce animal has devoured him, and we will see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he rescued him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but do not lay a hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand to restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the robe of many colors that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty, there was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing gum, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers listened to him. Then Midianite traders passed by, and they drew Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty shekels of silver. They took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes and returned to his brothers and said, The boy is gone, and I, where shall I go? Then they took Joseph's robe and slaughtered a goat and dipped the robe in the blood. And they sent the robe of many colors and brought it to their father and said, This we have found. Please identify whether it is your son's robe or not. And he identified it and said, It is my son's robe. A fierce animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted and said, No, I shall go down to Sheol to my son, mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Meanwhile the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, something greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places, seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came, 
and when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that person is worse than the first. So also will it be with this evil generation. While he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brothers stood outside, asking to speak to him. But he replied to the man who told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Welcome to Bible Time. Today, Genesis chapter 37, where we shift everything to the story of Joseph. Now, Joseph was a favorite child to Jacob, and this really made other brothers jealous. In fact, he told two of his dreams to, to his brothers that really made them upset. And first one was that the, uh, there was one grain that just rose and every other grain bowed down to this grain. And Je uh, Joseph said, I don't know what it means, but I had that dream. And they knew what it means that that, sh that was Joseph and every brothers will bow down to him. Another dream he had was the sun and the moon and the stars would all bow down to this one star, which is Joseph. And father, he told that to his brother. I don't know what that dream means, but everything else was bound down to me. And so the father says, do not talk about it. They're going to be jealous of you. And one day, uh, all the other brothers went out with the, shep uh, the flock uh, for their shepherds. And father wanted to know how they're doing. So gave them food to go see and see uh, give me the report of how their brothers are doing. So he meets them away from home and he gets there. He says, hello, brothers. And, and they met and they pushed him and put him into the pit. And they were thinking about how they could kill him. And of course, Judah says, don't kill him. Uh, what good is that going to do? And so by this time, a Midianite uh, was passing through with caravan. And so they sold it to Midianite for 20 pieces of shekel. And so um, they didn't know what to do, tell the, uh, the father. So they took the robe and dipped it into the goat's blood and brought it to Jacob. And Jacob, of course, his favorite son, it seems like it's devoured, it's died. So he was mourning. Now, story doesn't end there. The Midianite would take Joseph and they sold it to a Potiphar, who was the guardsman and the important person to the Pharaoh. And that's how the story ends. Listen, bad things could happen to you, but God is not done. When things are bad, I want you to know that God is still working uh, on your behalf. So all things work together for good to those who love him and call according to pur his purpose. And he will take care of you. Whatever ordeal that you face, God is with you. Now, Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 through 50, what you find is the religious leaders asking for a sign to show that he is truly the Son of Man. Up to now, Jesus has performed many miracles. He healed the sick. He cleansed every disease. And he also cast out demons. And they want another sign. In fact, the, the religious leader accused Jesus of doing this kind of thing by the power of demon. Knowing their unrepented heart, Jesus said, There is no sign that could be given to you where you would turn and believe in me. So he gives two examples in the Old Testament. First is Jonah. As, just as Jonah was in the belly of fish for three days, Son of Man will be taken into the heart of the earth for three days. And I am greater than Jonah. Another example that he gave was Solomon. Solomon was the wisest king that ever lived. And so from every part of the world, they came to listen to Solomon. And Jesus said that I am greater than the Solomon. And then Jesus gave them warning. Jesus says to them, if one uh, have the cast out demon, 
the demon would have no place to go and so they look for the empty place and they would have seven times more into uh, uh, the other person what jesus was saying is that if you do not believe now guess what the demon will be uh, just overwhelming in your life and it will enter into your heart if you reject Jesus now, then you will continue to, to be expanding of unbelief and evil in your heart. Now, this uh, chapter 12 is finished with Jesus uh, speaking to the people, uh, his mother and his half-brothers, the, the brothers that was born through Mary, through Joseph, uh, came to see him. And so they interrupt the meeting and say, hey, your brother and your mom is here to see you. Jesus said, wait a minute, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Wait, Jesus doesn't even know who his mother and brother is? No, what he was referring is, he stood up and pointed to the people who are following him, the disciple, here are my mother, here is my brother. And so he points to them and says this very word. He said, anyone who does the will of my father is my brother, and my sister and my my mother and so what Jesus was saying is that I am going to be identifying not by biologically I am identifying every everyone to the relationship to my father if we are followers of Christ if we believe in Jesus we are now brothers and sister and we are truly a mother to Jesus. We have this special relationship that comes from the salvation of Jesus Christ. We have new relationship and Jesus defines that. Okay, so we'll continue with Matthew chapter 13. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this time. I pray that we will continue to believe and do your will, that we know that in the kingdom that we are truly sons and daughters of God because of that relationship we have with our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.